Hello, good evening. You're watching News 360 from the News Hub. I am Porsche Gabo. My name is Alfred Okanse. Coming up in the bulletin tonight. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint, Piccadilly Biscuits, and My Life Insurance. Bank of Ghana revokes licenses of 23 insolvent savings and loans and finance house companies, including GN Savings and Loans. Meanwhile, government says it owes GN Savings and Loans only 30.33 million Ghana cities and not 942. .98 million. Also coming up tonight, government boast on employment figures comes under scrutiny as it is accused of cooking up figures. Minister of Education says it has no immediate plans of scrapping BEC but may in the future consider the introduction of a national standard based examination. Coming up in business tonight, we take a look at the booming food delivery system and find out who is regulating it. Elsewhere around the world, North Korea rejects further talks with South Korea, calling its decision completely the fault of the South's actions. We have details coming up shortly. Do stay with us. Let's get on to our first story this evening where the Bank of Ghana has revoked the licenses of 23 insolvent savings and loans companies and finance house, houses uh, in, in that manner. The revocation has become necessary because they are insolvent with no hope of being recapitalized within the period given to them by the central bank. The action was taken in pursuant of the Central Bank's Act 2016, Act 930, which requires the Bank of Ghana to revoke the license of a bank or specialized deposit-taking institution where the Bank of Ghana determines that institution is insolvent. According to the Central Bank's assessment, these institutions have no reasonable prospects of recovery and their continued existence poses severe risks to the stability of the financial system. The Bank of Ghana has also appointed Eric Nipa as a receiver for the specified institutions. The central bank says government has made funds available to enable the receiver pay depositors after their claims are validated. The Bank of Ghana has also revoked the licenses of two non-bank financial institutions, Express Funds International and Ghana Leasing Company, which are insolvent and have been inactive for a number of years. The Bank of Ghana says these actions are part of its efforts to restore confidence in the banking and specialized deposit-taking sectors. The first cleanup exercise by the Bank of Ghana was in August 2017. Meanwhile, government has revealed that contrary to claims by GN Savings and Loans that it owes it a total of 942.98 million cities, it only owes the bank 30.33 million cities. Well, this was contained in a press release by the Bank of Ghana on the closure of 23 savings and loans entities. According to the central bank, while GN has indicated that government owes it a total amount of 942.98 million Ghana cities, of which 102.73 million Ghana cities represented interim payment certificates, IPCs, the Bank of Ghana's assessment is that IPCs totaling 30.33 million Ghana cities only has been confirmed by the Ministry of Finance as of August 6, 2019, as owed to contractors that may be indebted to affiliates of GN. The Bank of Ghana's supervisory assessment shows that even when the total outstanding IPCs amount of 30.33 million Ghana cities was considered, it still did not address GN's capital deficit of 683.66 million Ghana cities. It will be recalled that Dr. Papakwesi Indrum, the founder of GN Group, saying on various platforms that they are looking forward to an assurance by the Bank of Ghana to help them retrieve monies owed them by government to strengthen their finances following the downgrade of GM Bank to a savings and loans company. According to him, the bank would have been strengthened financially if the government paid all the monies owed the bank. 
The release from the Bank of Ghana further indicated a recent Bank of Ghana investigation conducted at GN revealed that a significant amount of depositors' funds held with GN had been transferred to International Business Solutions, another company owned by Group Indum, which is based in the U.S. Let's still stay with GN Savings and Loans because with these issues that's coming up now, to the extent that some $62 million uh, were transferred to that U.S.-based uh, company that belongs to uh, the group in Doom as well, owned by Dr. Papakwe Sindom. The question is being asked whether that amount of money was moved during the period when depositors were also going to the banks, asking that their monies be paid for them. That was not very, very clear in that statement that was issued by the Bank of Ghana. But GN itself, that's Group Indum, has issued a press statement on a number of issues uh, regarding this particular release. And it, it reached that it's come to the attention of, of, of Group Indum, the entity representing interests of the majority shareholders and founders of GN Savings Limited, that documents are circulating that purport to be from the Bank of Ghana regarding the receivership of GN Savings Limited. Please note the following. Neither shareholders nor management of GN Savings have received any official communication from the Bank of Ghana regarding receivership. Two, if these companies or these documents are indeed genuine, the statements within regarding GN Savings are widely inaccurate, given the detailed information provided to the Bank of Ghana nearly a year ago. These statements are inconsistent with our discussions with both the Bank of Ghana and the Ministry of Finance. And we are aware that the Ministry of Finance has previously confirmed that balances due to GN savings and other related parties are far in excess of the amounts quoted in the communication from the Bank of Ghana. And they are just reacting to that statement uh, that was just read to you uh, with the government clarifying exactly how much they owe uh, that's GN savings. Our position is that GN savings is not only solvent, but would be highly liquid if the Ministry of Finance simply ordered itself and other government agencies to quickly pay amounts owed GN savings and other related entities. We expect this matter to be resolved uh, in due course. GN savings and all other concerned stakeholders will respond with more detail shortly. But in the meantime, we pray that all customers and uh, sh stakeholders remain calm while we work uh, through uh, this matter with relevant parties. Indeed, this is the statement um, that's signed by Papa Kusindum himself, who is a chairman and CEO of Group Indum. Let's go on to the telephone now and speak to Chinua Kodia, who is the executive secretary of the Association of Savings and Loans Companies here in Ghana. Remember, about 15 of the companies uh, that have actually had their licenses withdrawn are savings and loans. And joins me on the telephone. Chinua Kodia, thank you for your time uh, this evening. First of all, you've raised concerns here about how the Bank of Ghana went about this. Exactly what are those? Okay, good evening to your viewers uh, this evening. Um, we are of the view that um, Bank of Ghana has the prerogative in uh, sanitizing the sector, and Bank of Ghana has taken uh, the necessary action uh, to ensure that the sector remains resilient and good for people to do business with. Um, our initial concern before today was the approach they were going to use um, in doing the whole exercise. Um, now they have done what they wanted to do. What we can do now is to look at what is the way forward. Now we cannot be seen fighting over anything. What we can do is to look at what is the way forward to ensure that people who have their monies locked up get their monies, the 24 savings and loans left will continue to do business, and then customers will continue to have confidence in the numerous savings and loans left. But I must say this also, that there were, there were a number of companies that were mentioned in the uh, GN savings 
and uh, women's world banking, uh, for example, uh, which we, we do know that the f there's some interest that the finance minister has. Can you confirm that to us, whether indeed it is the case that uh, that particular company is a member of your association, that's Women's World, and indeed the finance minister had some interest in there? We can confirm that um, as, as at uh, the beginning of today, all the savings and loans companies whose licenses were revoked, that is the 15 of them, we can confirm that with the exception of Alpha Capital, that was not a member of the association. The rest were members of the association. I see. I want to thank you very much, Mr. Chinua Kodia, for your time this evening. Chinua Kodia is the executive secretary of the Association of Savings and Loans Companies here in Ghana. In other news, government boasts on employment figures has come under scrutiny as the deputy ranking member on the Employment, Social Welfare and State Enterprise Committee of Parliament is accusing government of cooking up the figures. While well, Richard Kwashiga also rubbished the significance of the jobs created within the various ministries, departments and agencies. In addition to these new jobs in the formal sector, the ever-famous Planting for Food and Jobs program is estimated to have created 1,593 jobs from 2017 to date. The government said 611,397 new jobs have been created in the formal sector, 343,458 of which were employed in MDAs over the last two years. Government has heavily defended the figures, saying they were from the Ghana Statistical Service metadata, a claim the Keta MP rubbished. Unfortunately, this government has proven not to be truthful to Ghanaians and would have them believe that the NPP led administration has not only created new jobs but has reduced unemployment in our country to 7.1%. The fact that the officials of this government, including the president himself, keep churning out conflicting employment and labor force figures attest to their level of dishonesty about tackling the unemployment situation. Government at the meet the press said about 800,000 people are currently unemployed in the country. The deputy ranking member says government should not engage in propaganda on job creation. We are cautioning the government to desist from churning out dubious and fabricated employment figures and rather seek the right figures from the GSS they previously rubbished and, who's, and holistically tackle the worsening unemployment situation in this country. Ghanaians are already suffering enough to be ridiculed with dubious and fabricated employment figures. And the General Secretary of the Ghana Agricultural Workers Union, Edward Kawa, joins us in the studio to tell us his views on government's claims that about 1.5 million people have been employed under the Planting for Food and Jobs program. Thanks for your time, Mr. Kawa. So, first of all, what do you make of claims by government that 1.5 million people have been recruited under the Planting for Food and Jobs program? Well, we let me say that jobs are things that are at the heart of every Ghanaian, particularly we those who are fortunate to have employment because much of our income goes into servicing people who are unemployed. So if there's an effort to create jobs, certainly we all uh, are in for it. But we also have to be asking ourselves certain questions. Are we talking about employment or we are talking about jobs? What is a job? And then when you ask the ordinary Ghanaian on the street, who is looking for work to do, and you, you, what is his conception of job? You know, it's, it's a job just about going to have, uh, being engaged for a few hours or a few days in the year, 
and then that constitutes a job, or we are looking at where someone is employed, he earns income, and that income he is able to feed himself and his family and then meet mm -hmm. the basic needs. Because we are, our concern is to solve problem. And what is our problem? Our problem is lack of income for people to be able to meet their daily needs. So when we say jobs, we want us to understand that we are not in for jobs. We should be in for employment. Mm. Because employment is all inclusive. It gives some level of job security. It can allow for one to plan. It's predictable. The people who are engaged in employment can be located, All can right. be traced. So from no Gao's own research, how many people have been employed under the Planting for Food and Jobs program? Well, we don't have those figures. And um, <laughs> the Planting for Food and Jobs may have come with some jobs, we may have come with some employment. But the figures is what is uh, quite uh, difficult for us to appreciate. Because if between 2017, and 2019, today, we have got uh, 1.5 million jobs uh, created by the Planting for Food and Jobs. One would like to ask the question, in 2017 alone, per government-owned figures, that 750,000 jobs were created with 200,000 families mm -hmm. under the program, with uh, five crops, that were being used. Now, in 2018, the number of farmers that were engaged rose to 500,000 farmers, mm. you know, with additional crop areas. Now, if you follow the logic, <laughs> simple logic, if 200,000 farmers will lead us to 750,000 uh, jobs, then 500,000 farmers will lead us not less than 200, I mean, 2 million jobs. Mm. Not to talk about one million uh, farmers being engaged in uh, by the plan for food mm. and jobs. So there is a disconnect, mm. you know. So if we follow that logic, it means even the 1.5 million mm. jobs they are talking about is less. So why is it less? Mm. Why is it that the 750,000 jobs All right. was okay? All right. And then if you follow that logic, you see that you are getting less numbers. So there's a problem with the way we calculate our jobs. Oh, right. And we need clarification on Thank that. Thank you very much for your time. I've been speaking to Edward Karua. He's the General Secretary of the Ghana Agricultural Workers Union. So it, it appears that there's a lot more <laughs> discussions that will go on on this mm. particular <laughs> issue of uh, the numbers that were put out there by the Ministry of uh, Employment and Labor Relations yeah. regarding some of these interventions. But uh, away from that, the Ministry of Education is also saying it has no immediate plans of scrapping basic education certificate examination as BC, but may in the future consider the introduction of a national standard-based examination. The comments come in the wake of reports that the exam scheme, will, that's BC, will be scrapped sooner because of its shortfalls. The Basic Education Certificate Examinations was introduced 32 years ago to qualify students for admission into secondary and vocational schools in the country. It is administered by the Ghana Education Service under the Ministry of Education. Over the years, there have been concerns about leakages, examination more practices, and unfair advantage the current system grants to students from private schools over those in public schools. The Ministry of Education is currently considering a system where the first assessment for basic school pupils would be done at the senior high school. According to the communications director at the ministry, engagements are ongoing with stakeholders on the introduction of the national standard assessment. The results that you have been churning out as far as BEC and WASI is concerned, whereby we have most of our kids failing English, most of, most of them also failing mathematics, and most of them also failing in science. So it's part of the plethora of um, suggestions or reforms that you want to um, implement so that we can have our results in a better way. So as we speak, the status quo remains. BEC is not scrapped. 
he explained the assessments would be done periodically for busy school pupils, unlike the BEC examinations, which is done at the end of junior high school. Oh, we are considering um, having a situation whereby we will include senior high school as part of the basic education. At class 2 or P2, um, we are going to have an examination for our young ones. Uh, P4, we may have examination for our young ones. And P6 too, we may do that national standards assessment. Um, this is supposed to um, bring out the weaknesses as far as um, the educational system is concerned because we don't want to have a situation whereby the weaknesses are seen in our young case only at the BEC level. According to the ministry, a review of the junior high school curriculum will be done soon as part of ongoing reforms in the education sector. You're watching News 360. We have more news coming up shortly. Do stay with us. Hello, a very good evening and a warm welcome to the business news segment here on News 360. My name is Pa Kwesi Asari and I'm sure you know that there's been a lot of uh, happenings within the financial industry. Uh, for those of you who've been monitoring the airwaves uh, since afternoon, uh, the central bank has again released a list of some finance and savings and loans uh, houses uh, that have had their licenses revoked. And I'm sure that I'm pretty sure I'll be taking you through uh, a number of them and telling you exactly the reasons the central bank cited for uh, essentially uh, revoking their licenses. So I'll just take you th through uh, a brief, uh, briefly the Women's World Bank, and it's one of the, the, the savings and loans companies that's had their licenses revoked. Now, this company was incorporated on May 31 as an NGO and became fully operational as a private limited liability company on September 17, 1996, and subsequently licensed as a savings and loans company in October 1996 by the Central Bank. Uh, among the reasons cited by the Central Bank for revoking their license was that the company had a net worth of a negative 45.56 million as at May uh, 2019. That's just one of the many reasons cited by the central bank. Again, CDH Savings and Loans Company was one of the companies cited, uh, you know, which had its licenses revoked. It commenced operations in 2016 after taking over Ivory Finance Company. For those of you in the financial sector, I'm sure this uh, will come as no news to you. It was identified insolvent in August 2018 after reporting a negative capital adequacy ratio now, various engagements and plans with the help of the central bank to inject extra capital into the operations have proven futile, uh, as cited by the central bank. Again, let's look at one other company, Midland Savings and Loans Company. And this company uh, was very much in the news sometime last year. I'm sure you heard the story of the woman who was beaten by a police uh, man for demanding her money. And the reason the central bank cited for revoking the line census was that the institution's net worth uh, was a negative 148.9. Million. It also said the institution recorded a capital adequacy ratio of negative 311.91%. Uh, it said that the institution also failed to conduct due diligence on counterparties resulting in the impairment of investment. Now, let's look at the final um, company here. Uh, that's GN Savings and Loans. Now, this is important for us because this company was first GN Bank and it was downgraded by the central bank to a savings and loans company in just a matter of months just a matter of months the central bank has revoked the license of the savings and loans company and, and they're saying that GN has consistently failed to meet the minimum cash reserve requirements of 10 percent of its total deposits since the end of the first quarter of 2019 and this has come you know, with a lot of disputes, uh, we, we've already seen a, a statement uh, from Dr. Papakwisi Indum, who is the group CEO and also founder of Group Indum, essentially, uh, you know, challenging the claims by the central bank. And we're waiting to see a lot more on this developing story. Right, so we're going to go live on the phone lines now and speak to Roderick. Uh, he is an analyst and he's just going to join us to do some analysis on this. Thank you very much, Roderick, for your time. Uh, I'm sure you've been monitoring uh, all the happenings within the financial sector since the central bank uh, began the cleaning up exercise. Um, what's your own assessment now that we're told this is the very final one? Well, thank you um, and, and good evening. Well, uh, this is the third one. And um, my assessment is that uh, we sort of successfully 
and sear through the first one, the second one, and then the third one. The third one would create some panic, and which has already started. But if I base um, the observation on the first and second, the first was actually um, one of the largest, and then the second and, and the third one. I am predicting that we may go through a little turbulence, but the recovery will be faster than the first and the second um, one. That is um, in terms of the reaction from the um, public. But I think, you know, um, <clears throat> looking back, if we could have done this in at once, that would have been more um, beneficial in the sense that if, for instance, we had done this um, when we did the microfinance um, um, collapsing, by now, which we were settling, we wouldn't have come back to another knee-jerk action or reactionary uh, position where clients are still wondering whether the financial sector is safe at all. So basically, those are my um, initial comments. On, mm. on, on right. uh, this wouldn't go without a fight from some of the affected companies already. We know Dr. Papakwesi Indum is challenging the claims uh, by the central bank. You, you think there's any uh, room f of success for some of the companies affected? Uh, um, um, for instance, I mean, uh, um, GN downgrade was, for me, the first of its kind in most financial sector. I have not seen a universal bank being downgraded to a savings and loans. And um, from where I sat and from what I observed, I knew it would still not be a solution for GN. I mean, purely from the um, observation or, or technical view not even looking at the books as it were, because the dynamics in banking are so much. Um, beyond your capital, image and trust is also a key. And for you to have been reduced from, let's say, a universal bank to a savings and loan, that will take an extra effort beyond just capital to meet it. I don't right. know what he knows, mm. but as far as um, the figures and the, reaction, the actions are concerned, well, I can only say that I wish him luck. In Thank you very much, Roderick, as a financial analyst, helping us to do some analysis on happenings within, the Ghana's, within Ghana's financial industry. Thank you very much for your time. And thanks also for watching the Business News segment here on News 360. My name is Parkus Yassai. For more business news stories, you can log on to our website, www.3news.com. Uh, up next is Mission with Portia Gabo. Mission is supported by the Star Ghana Foundation with thanks to Danida, UK Aid and the EU. She's a role model and a good example for persons living with disability in the Agona West Municipality of the Central Region. And she's put her share of the 3% District Assembly Common Fund for Persons with Disability to good use by setting up a business. Mission brings to you the story of Esther Isibu. Esther Isibu is one of the beneficiaries of the 3% District Assembly Common Fund for persons with disability in the Agona West Municipality. She's been able to set up a business with her share of the fund. My friend, I'm using a common fund. I'm going to buy seven years. I'm going to buy my 10 million that time. I got a refrigerator, started a soap and footwear business through the 3% District Assembly Common Fund. It's a good thing. Realizing that movement for persons with disability is a challenge, she constructed ramps in her rented shop. Me ya disabled yezi na me wash to ya wasa me ya rampa me tu me di fi chaya fasu ana se me nu ya disabled bi ba me chaya ono so be. I needed to construct a ramp for persons with disability. Imagine the commercial bank here to construct one. Commercial bank fu oni bi a champion oni bi wo ni na me no ha kan ho asem se wasa wo nya ramp am disabled yi re ba no ha we tu wa ba. The director of social welfare department in the Agona West Municipality, Robert Barr, was pleased with Esther's achievement. She's so industrious. Any little benefit that she gets, she put it into good use. And as a result, she's been able to establish herself so well. 
And for that, um, any time that she needs something and applies, yeah, we we also uh, grant it uh, because we know that um, she is always expanding. Yeah, and she has become a good example to um, all of them. Yeah, and some are emulating her good um, uh, example. And we are so much uh, proud of her. Robert Barr said the Social Welfare Department supports the upkeep of persons with disability in the municipality, especially with school fees and the procurement of assistance devices. A lot of them um, actually have no support at all. Yeah. And uh, they also have severe disabilities, such that even if you give them the money, they cannot turn it round to um, increase it. They only use it for um, their uh, feeding. Yeah, and so that is one challenge. And another is that um, we procured items for them, uh, thinking that they will use them yeah, to better their lives. For instance, some requested for deep freezers, uh, of, of which we uh, provided. Others requested for ovens, uh, pepper grinding machines and all that, yeah. A few of them have put them to use. Others have um, uh, nicely kept them, yeah. So we are educating them, yeah, to put them to good use. Esther has applied again for the 3% District Assembly Common Fund. She wants another refrigerator to expand her business. She had an advice for persons with disability. Persons with disability should start a small business and not always rely on their relatives for their upkeep. Oh yes, sir. Oh, oh, mama, no, oh, wa, and now papa, no, oh, wa, and as a woman, no, wa, oh, by then, oh, wa, oh, bra. And that's it for mission. Mission is supported by the Star Ghana Foundation. With thanks to Danida, UK Aid, and the AU. Thanks so much for watching. Up. Right, so tonight we start with the stage. Award-winning playwright and motivational speaker, Uncle Lebo White, has affirmed the boy called a girl playwright, Kwabnansa, as his successor in the Ghanaian theatre industry. The two playwrights are known for their insightful stage works at the National Theatre. The chief executive officer of Riverman Productions has, over the last decade, written, produced and directed countless stage plays. On his live flagship program, Food for Thought, on Facebook, Uncle Lebo White finally confirmed who was to take his place when he was no more. For those of you who have been asking, asking me about what was next when I'm gone, I have him here. He's crazy, he said. Kwabnansa has six plays to his credit and is known for his queer style of telling stories. His latest piece, The Boy Called a Girl, has been the talk of town. Well, that's about it for entertainment news tonight. Do have yourself a good rest of the evening and have a good weekend. I'm Miriam. It's been a great week. Yeah. On behalf of the rest of the team, I want to say thank you. Uh, my name is Alfred Okansi. And I am Portia Gabo. Enjoy the rest of our programs. Good evening.